Speaking of uh, talking of the Easter weekend, if you've been stocking up on Easter eggs, maybe hot cross buns, uh, you've probably noticed that prices have been going up. They're much more expensive this year than yeah. last year. Oh, my goodness. I always used to buy a load of the one-pound eggs, so if any kids came around, you could just dish them out. But for the kids, yeah? Get, for, the, for the kids. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you just yeah. can't get your hands on the one-pound eggs. Uh, ben is at a bakery in Bolton um, to explain why there's been such a hike in prices. Morning to you, Ben. Good morning. It's a busy morning here. Stephen is uh, packing up the bread to take to the bakery shops, but also uh, to the customers, the businesses that buy from them as well. As busy as they always are at this time of day. But of course, at this time of year, they're not just making the loaves of bread as tasty and as tempting as these look. They're also making those Easter treats that we all love. Look at some of the ones they've got on offer here. We've got some chocolate cupcakes topped with carrot icing. Down here, we've got some Easter chick cupcakes. And then down there, have a look, some sheet iced cookies. Don't they all look very tempting indeed? And of course, you're talking about hot cross buns. Everyone's favourite hot cross buns at this time of year. The thing is, the price of the ingredients to make all of these things is getting more expensive. Let me run you through some examples. The price of eggs has gone up by more than 30% compared with a year ago. The price of sugar has risen by almost 40% compared with last year. And the cost of milk, in some cases, up to 42% more expensive than it was a year before. All of which makes it more expensive to make all of these products. And the price that they end up having to charge customers like you and me. We'll hear about the impact it's having on this business in a moment. But first, Hannah Miller has been to speak to some other businesses about how they're coping with rising costs. So we'll do this with white cocoa butter first. And then after that, we're going to use a yellow and an orange. At this chocolate shop in Lancashire, Paul makes almost 2,000 Easter eggs a year. So we also use probably too much chocolate for an Easter egg. There's no such thing, is there? But the cost of making a treat like this isn't set. Give it a little bit of a jiggle, and then we put it on our little machine, which then starts spinning. With the chocolate ingredients he uses, up 20% this year. A lot of eggs are bought for children. And unfortunately, we know that our chocolate isn't the cheapest. This has now been in the fridge for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and we can now reveal. Looking oh. good. One Easter egg. And so far this Easter, are people still coming? Yes. Touch wood. You know, we've done some of our big stuff. Well, normally we do a big five and a half kilo egg, which we haven't done this year. We've gone slightly smaller with um, our rabbit, uh, who's only two and a bit kilos. Um, and we know that we can only go to a certain amount, so we still try and do three for ten, even though they're a four-pound egg or a six-pound egg, and make it at price points which people can afford. Food prices are rising at record rates, more than 17% higher than last year, according to the latest data. And at this time of year, around one in six shopping baskets contain some kind of Easter treat, with items like chocolate, hot cross buns and roast lamb making up around 4% of our total grocery spending. And at this farm in Cumbria, the cost of rearing animals has gone up. Our feed's gone up 50%. Our electricity has trebled. Water's gone up probably 15%, labour 10%. So, yeah, everything has gone up astronomically. At one stage last year, it became too expensive to even produce these eggs, leading to shortages in the shops. Have the supermarkets started paying you more for the eggs? Yes, it has gone up. Um, it did take quite a while, really, to filter through the system. Then, obviously, some people, like ourselves, took the decision that we stopped producing for a while. They're paying a rate now that it's, it's sustainable to carry on producing eggs. And in among all the symbols of Easter, this year, higher prices are fast becoming a tradition as well. Hannah Miller, BBC News. Well, plenty of treats here, as we were saying, and I just noticed the Easter bunny cookies as well. Uh, let's speak to Stephen, who's uh, a third generation of the family that uh, owns this, uh, this bakery factory. Um, Stephen, we've heard about the pressures on businesses. What are the biggest cost pressures for you? Um, at the moment, it's uh, staff, um, so labour, ingredients uh, and energy. Um, so 
some in, some products, of course, we can invest in machinery, uh, such as um, bun and roll plant, where the hot cross buns were going through. But of course, the energy needed to run the machine uh, last year, for example, went up over 300% for us. So um, significant increases in energy, and the ovens required to bake everything is obviously gas. Uh, and more and more, as we go to third parties, there's freezers. You can't turn those off. Um, so it, it is, has been quite significant over the last 12 months. And what do you do? Because presumably, if businesses have higher costs, you, your instinct is put the prices up. But if your customers are facing cost of living pressures, they may then decide that it's a, an expense too far and they go without, as tempting as these treats look, they decide they can't afford them. Yeah, so we do, we do deal with um, other customers, um, such as wholesalers and things, and of course they have their own idea of what the price should be. Um, but the majority of our turnover is actually from our own customers through our own shops. And they have the same um, challenges that we have and you can only put the price up so far. So you can either take it on the chin, which in this day and age, you know, we're running leaner than ever after COVID. Um, so you then you have to start cutting costs. Um, so you can either invest in machinery or you mm. can reduce the amount of products that we make and have a, a leaner menu. OK, Stephen, thank you very much for explaining all of that for us. Uh, Stephen Smart there. Um, I have to say, you know, seeing these hot cross buns, Nina and John, throws me back. You're probably too young to remember this. The old nursery rhyme, one a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. I think they need to do uh, an updated 2023 version because one a penny, two a penny, no chance. No, yeah. that needs some serious revision, doesn't it? Thank you, Ben. We'll be back with Ben later. No munching. Now, if you've been stocking up on Easter eggs and hot cross buns over the last few days ahead of the Easter weekend, you will have noticed inevitably that prices are much higher than they were a year ago. It's so noticeable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. No more the one pound eggs that we used to stock up on. Uh, Ben's at a bakery in Bolton this morning with more. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hold her back. That is... <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed. I thought you were going to throw with Ben Bulos at a bakery business in Bolton, but uh, maybe you chickened out of that one. Uh, let me show you the treats that we've been doing our best not to devour this morning. We've got the iced sheep cookies there. And on the next shelf up, we've got the, look at those, the sweet little iced chick ring donuts behind them, the Easter nests. And then down there, it wouldn't be complete without the Easter bunny cookies as well. The problem, as you say, though, is the cost of the ingredients to make all of this is getting more expensive and significantly more expensive. Let me run you through some of the examples. The price of eggs has gone up more than 30% compared with a year ago. The cost of sugar has gone up almost 40%. And when you look at the price of milk, depending on the sort you buy, it's gone up as much as 42% compared with last year. So all of that is putting pressure on businesses like this one and the prices that they ultimately charge customers like you and me. We'll hear about this business in particular in just a moment. But first, Hannah Miller has been hearing how it's affecting other businesses as well. So we'll do this with white cocoa butter first. And then after that, we're going to use a yellow and an orange. At this chocolate shop in Lancashire, Paul makes almost 2,000 Easter eggs a year. So we also use probably too much chocolate for an Easter egg. There's no such thing, is there? But the cost of making a treat like this isn't set. Give it a little bit of a jiggle, and then we put it on our little machine, which then starts spinning. With the chocolate ingredients he uses, up 20% this year. A lot of eggs are bought for children. And unfortunately, we know that our chocolate isn't the cheapest. This has now been in the fridge for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and we can now reveal. Looking right. good. One Easter egg. And so far this Easter, are people still coming? Yes, touch wood. You know, we've done some of our big stuff. Well, normally we do a big five and a half kilo egg, which we haven't done this year. We've gone slightly smaller with um, our rabbit, uh, who's only two and a bit kilos. Um, and we know that we can only go to a certain amount, so we still try and do three for ten, even though they're a four-pound egg or a six-pound egg, and make it at price points which people can afford. Food prices are rising at record rates, more than 17% higher than last year, according to the latest data. And at this time of year, around one in six shopping baskets contain some kind of Easter treat, with items like chocolate, hot cross buns and roast lamb making up around 4% of our total grocery spending. 
and at this farm in Cumbria, the cost of rearing animals has gone up. Our feed's gone up 50%. Our electricity has trebled. Water's gone up probably 15%, labour 10%. So, yeah, everything has gone up astronomically. At one stage last year, it became too expensive to even produce these eggs, leading to shortages in the shops. Have the supermarkets started paying you more for the eggs? Yes, it has gone up. Um, it did take quite a while, really, to filter through the system. Then, obviously, some people, like ourselves, took the decision that we stopped producing for a while. They're paying a rate now that it's, it's sustainable to carry on producing eggs. And in among all the symbols of Easter, this year, higher prices are fast becoming a tradition as well. Hannah Miller, BBC News. Well, talking about traditions, I know you probably thought I missed them out earlier. The hot cross buns, of course, an Easter favourite, and they've got plenty of these here on the display at the bakery. Let's speak to the retail sales director for Greenhouses, uh, Georgie. And um, Georgie, uh, this time of year, people do want to perhaps indulge and treat themselves. Yeah. It's costing you more to make all of this, so yeah. presumably are you having to put prices up? We are having to put prices up, but where the hot cross buns are, we've kept at the same price as the last two years, and we've actually seen an increase of about 30%. So people are still buying hot cross buns? Yeah, it's a great tradition, and Green Alt is with third generation, so we're steeped in family traditions and traditions as a whole. But then when it's costing you more to make them, we were in the factory earlier seeing them being made, when it's costing you more to make them, if you're keeping the price the same, how is that viable for business? See, we kept this price the same, but we have to streamline the entire range that we have. So we're only selling products that we know we can sell and that the customers do want. And that way we're going to be able to save costs on the ingredients. And on the retail side of the business, what are the other costs that you're noticing have gone up sharply apart from the ingredients? Oh, electric, obviously. Uh, and um, energy as a whole has, has, has gone up. Um, and then when you, you look at how you cope with that, are you still keeping the, the shops open for as long? Are you changing staffing rotors and things? How does that work? We're just trying to streamline as much as possible. So when the ovens aren't working, we turn them off. If the fridges aren't in use, we turn them off. I suppose some things like the fridges, you've got to keep them on to keep the ingredients fresh. Yeah, we do. Uh, the ovens we can turn off in the afternoon. We've got aircon that we can turn off and as when we don't need it. So we're trying, we're trying our bit and we're doing our bit. OK. I'm going to put you on the spot. Your favourite Easter treat that you sell? Oh, hot cross buns. Hot cross buns, a yeah. classic, a traditional favourite. <laughs> Georgie, thank you very much. And, you know, seeing the hot cross buns, Nina and John, reminds me of that old nursery rhyme, one a penny, two a penny. But I think they need to do a 2023 reboot of it because good luck finding any anywhere of these for one a penny, two a penny these days. No, they haven't heard about inflation, have they, Ben? Um, just a quick one. Controversially, in the studio no. this morning, someone suggested hot cross buns with cheese. A savoury adaptation. Savoury hot cross buns. I've seen them done. I have to say, <laughs> I'm a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to hot cross buns. I do like the classic, just a uh, bit of cinnamon, maybe. Although Ooh. I did one year try the, the ones with apple pieces. Apple and cinnamon. Oh. You know, something to write home about, definitely. <laughs> something to experiment with over the next few days. Ben, thank you. In fact, Ben, you're, you're half an hour from here and we're on air for another half hour. So if you leave immediately and head here with those buns, you'll be able to greet us and toast them when we come off Well, air. I tell you what... I tell you what, John, if we just step the camera back a little bit, you'll be able to see it's actually on a handy little wagon, so I could wheel the whole thing back to the studio <laughs> for you if you like. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up some cheddar on the way. Thanks, Ben.